Good afternoon, Matrix. We are now going to be focusing on the Employment Equity Act. This act states that employees who do the same work or work of equal value must be paid equally. So, I mean, the word equity kind of reminds us that we need to think of this word equal. Right, so try and remember when you see equity, think of the word equal. Some other purposes of the Employment Equity Act is that it promotes equal opportunity and also fair treatment in the workplace. Okay, there needs to be absolutely no discrimination on grounds of gender, race, color, religion. So when we think of the Employment Equity Act, we need to understand it's about equality. So there can be no kind of discrimination towards people. It's more about giving diversity and equal opportunity for all. It protects employees from victimization. It provides for employees to refer and resolve disputes if they have any to the CCMA. And this protection from the victimization is if they exercise their rights given to them by the Employment Equity Act. A word that often pops up with the Employment Equity Act is the idea of affirmative action. And affirmative action is about favoring members from the previously disadvantaged group. If we move on to the effectiveness of the Employment Equity Act on business, this looks at the positives and negatives. And if we focus on the positives first, as I said earlier, it's about promoting equal opportunity and fair treatment in the workplace. It provides all employees with legal recourse should they need to take the employers to court. It promotes this implementation of affirmative action, which I said is favoring members from a previously disadvantaged group. Because it's this idea of equity and equal, it really does encourage diversity. It also encourages consultation between the employer and the employee. And businesses are now in a better position to negotiate contracts with government, which impacts positively also in terms of the BEE rating. Some of the negatives or the disadvantages is that there's an increased administration burden as businesses must complete and submit employment equity reports every two years. It's expensive to train or employ someone who knows very little about the Act. Fines and penalties for non-compliant businesses may be expensive for the business too. And employers have to appoint one or more senior managers to the ensure that this implementation of the Employment Equity Act is taking place. Businesses must some, submit a compliance certificate before they can conduct businesses with state businesses. Businesses are sometimes pressurized to appoint an unsuitable employment equity candidate to meet the employment equity requirements. Other positions go unfilled because they are just simply no suitable employment equity candidates or affirmative action candidates. Remember those from previously disadvantaged groups. If we move on to the penalties for non-compliance, businesses may be taken to the Labour Court for prosecution. Fines may be imposed on businesses that fail to comply with the reporting obligations of the Employment Equity Plan every two years. The Department of Labour may block non-compliant companies from doing any business with the government. So now what are the discriminatory actions with regards to the Employment Equity Act? Not employing a young woman because she would want to have children in the future would be seen as discriminatory. Refusing to employ a person because he or she has strong religious beliefs or has a disability is also a discriminatory action. Doing HIV testing unless it's been justified by the Labour Court. You are not allowed to force an employee to do an HIV test. Denying people access to the workforce based on their gender, their race, their culture and treating them unfairly is truly a dis discriminatory action. Let's now look at how to comply with the Employment Equity Act. So firstly, businesses must guard against any kind of discriminatory appointments. They must promote equal opportunities and fair treatment. They must have reasonable accommodation of people from a number of designated groups. They must ensure that there is equal representation of all racial groups in every level of employment. They need to submit the Employment Equity Plan to the Department of Labor every two years. They must retain or keep designated groups 
including skills developments of people within such groups. They must assess the racial composition of all employees, including senior management. There needs to be clearly defined appointment processes so that all parties are well informed and it is transparent. So I know I sit on our employment equity um, committee and it's very interesting when we start looking at how many women do we have, how many men do we have, how many people from foreign countries do we have, how many people with disabilities do we have. And when you start looking at it, it as a percentage of the whole workforce, it becomes quite interesting and you can clearly see whether or not a workforce is diverse or not. Right, ladies and gentlemen, that is really all there is on the Employment Equity Act. I hope that you've enjoyed this and hopefully one day you will also sit on an Employment Equity Committee. Have a good day.